please don't tell me that this was while you were racing for the W Series and managing a team and being a stunt driver for Bond. It all was the same year. 2019. <laughs> 2019, man, I've got so much trauma. Oh my. <laughs> Welcome back to part two of my interview with Naomi Schiff. She's such an amazing, inspirational young lady and has a very, very exciting future and I can't wait to watch. Someone called me and they were like, oh, have you seen this thing's just come out online called W Series? W Series. I was like, no, what's it about? They were like, free drive, this, that. I was like, it's too good to be true. That's yeah. not going to happen. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. They were like, but just, just contact them. So I did like an online application, didn't hear back for like five hours. So I panicked. I was like, I'm going to miss the boat. Oh, no. So like added Catherine Bonmio on Facebook. Oh, did you? I was like, Catherine, <laughs> I've sent an application. Hi. I've not heard back. Like, oh, what is going on? And she was like, oh, I'm so glad you've contacted us. We've been trying to reach you. Um, <gasps> well, I'll make sure that Louisa, who at the time was looking after the drivers, will get in touch with you. And then, yeah, I became a part of a, a long list of women who wanted to be in this championship. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I had to negotiate a bit with my boss for him to let me to let you sit know. out of my contract as a driver for him for the last year of my you know, contract. Especially you just won as well. I yeah. mean, it would be like, oh. Yeah. So, yeah, so you kind of had to negotiate mm -hmm. because you just won the championships the year before. Yeah. Then you had W Series saying. Yeah. So they, they were understanding. They were good because I know you obviously went on and did W. Yeah, yeah. Well, in, in the essence, I was... Even in 2018, when I was racing in that championship, I was still managing the team. So you I was were doing still both. doing both. Yeah, so we agreed that I could do it, but I would still be working for them. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. So and I, all it was on tough. the same weekends, right? So it's kind of you needed to... Well, no. So I was managing the race team in two championships. They were low. Every weekend or every week outside of W Series, I was at another racetrack ordering fuel, wow. organizing hotel rooms for the team, catering, like there were loads of things. Sometimes I would get out of the car, do my data session with my engineer and then go back to my hotel and like sort things out then for the team. The wow. Yeah. So it was a lot and I was doing mm. so much. I was kind of like co-hosting this TV show in Germany and I was stunt driving in James Bond and I was doing loads. Whoa, 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 yes. stunt, whoa. Yeah. Go, go back, stunt, stunt driving yeah. in James Bond. Yeah. Amazing experience. I know, I know. incredible. Incredible experience. It was crazy. I mean, when they first contacted me, it was much like when I first out of the blue, completely out of the blue, and also in like in a very non-traditional way. Like they send me a DM. <laughs> Did they drop into your DMs? They, they slid into my DMs. Wow. And I was like, this is not this true. Is, this, this is not is, real. Yeah, exactly. Ignored them. They then messaged me on my Facebook account, and I was like, wow, this this guy's got a lot of time. Like, ignored him again. Yeah. And then a friend of mine called me and he was like, listen, these people are trying to reach you to do this, you know, stunt driving and bond. And I was like, oh, oh, it's, it's real. <laughs> like, it's real. And I've been ignoring them for like and which two or three Which weeks. film was it? The latest one, the latest No Time one. to Die. Yeah. So I was Lashana Lynch's driving double. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. So that was like completely left field as well. But such a cool experience. I mean, whilst, and this, don't, please don't tell me that this was while you were racing for the W Series and managing a team and being a stunt driver for Bond. It all was the same year. 2019. <laughs> 2019, man, I've got so much trauma. Oh my. <laughs> so it was really tough. Gosh. I mean, I hadn't been in a Formula car for six years. So like re, like retraining my ABS braking leg yeah, yeah, yeah. to like break with an, without the assisted braking. It was really tough. We only had six races on the calendar with very little practice time. I had no budget to go testing. So yeah. I was just rocking up on the weekend and trying Too to much. do my best. And I was yeah. learning while doing essentially like retraining my habits. Yeah. So I feel like it was, it was a lot. Yeah. And I think considering the whole circumstance, the results weren't that bad. Were pretty good. Yeah. Like I was most often like midfield, like I had a highlight here and there where I had like a mm -hmm. top five in a practice. But mm -hmm. considering how unprepared I was rocking up to the race weekend. No, it's extraordinary. It honestly. went relatively well. And probably 90% of who you were racing against would have been solely focused, yeah. totally immersed. I think unfortunately there were still some women on the grid who were working other jobs. Right. Um, but, but I think a couple of them who were in that situation had more ex more recent experience in Formula cars, right? Or had just been in in a seat a lot more than I was over the last five years. So, yeah. um, 
Yeah, but it was an interesting challenge. I mean, it takes, you know, and probably unless you race, it takes a lot of, you know, you have to learn a lot if you're going back and to a track, you've got to make sure you know exactly, you know, some of the tracks you might not have driven. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, you've got to become, you know, almost intimate with this track yeah. to, to be getting the right times. And So I managed to get one sponsor or two sponsors that were on my helmet and Unfortunately, they weren't massive budgets, so yeah. a, day in a, a day in a Formula car is really expensive and I couldn't really afford, is. even with the money that I had, I couldn't afford a test day. So what I did is I spent that money on um, going to a simulator place in Holland. Uh, that's got, they've got a really good facility, great simulator, so and that's where I did like the, the little tracks. bit of testing that I could. I mean, um, that's just, it's unbelievable that you weren't actually there on the track, no. that you did it all sim. Yeah, it was, it was amazing kind of a little bit difficult. Every time I like rocked up to the weekend, I was either ill or just come off of being ill. So yeah, it, was just, yeah, yeah. it was a tough year, but like <sighs> incredible learning curve in terms of like multi, I mean, multitasking and multi-managing and it was intense. I'm not sure many men could have done that. <laughs> <laughs> so how did, you know, finishing the year, your crazy year, 2019 mm. and, um, and coming into Sky Sports as the, new analyst and presenter for the F1 and you've just been absolutely brilliant. Thank how you. Did, how did, is that, was, did they go into your DMs as well? <laughs> how did that happen? Not quite. I mean, it didn't happen that quickly. I, um, yeah. at the end of the like, W Series year in 2019 when I drove, um, I obviously hadn't qualified for the next season as yeah. I just explained was quite a tough year. Yeah, juggling. Yeah, quite it was a few things. only the top 12 automatically qualified for the next year and the rest of the grid that they Have would fill up would be new drivers. Okay. So that meant that no matter what I did, 2020, I wouldn't have driven because I didn't qualify. So my plan was try to use 2020 to get a budget, get fitter, mm. you know, do some testing and come back better for W Series in 2021. Mm. There was also something quite like major going on yeah. in 2020 as right. well. Right, <laughs> yeah, which kind of like ruined my plans. Yeah, but, um, yeah, so COVID yeah. obviously hit, yeah. which meant W Series didn't have a series in 2020. So I ended up participating in the eSports League, which was fun. At least we got to race from home yeah, yeah, yeah. during lockdown okay, and kind cool. of be connected with each other. Um, but that also meant that the drivers who had been selected for 2020 would automatically be the drivers for 2021, so which meant that whatever happened, I would have been out of the seat for two for years, two years. Yeah, I get which it. was like really mm. hard to bounce back from for me anyway. Mm -hmm. And I'd spent that year working for W Series kind of really thinking about if I was happy with what I was doing, what, what I was going to do next, because the plan that I had isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. And so I spoke to the team at W Series and kind of said, look, what I'm doing right now is not really what I want to be doing at this point in my career. Like I want to still be focusing on myself, maybe do some more stunt driving, like yeah. try to like push myself. And they were like, well, you know, you did do once do this tour of our hospitality and we really like like the footage. So would you consider maybe being part of the broadcast team as a pundit or something? And I was like, yes, I'll do that. Amazing. Like, yeah. That's perfect. So I rocked up to the first weekend in Austria and um, Anna Woolhouse was supposed to be presenting as lead presenter. We had a great team of like uh, Billy Monger, Brilliant. Ted Kravitz, yes. you name it, and me. Yeah. And unfortunately, Anna's dad got really ill very suddenly and passed away. So she wasn't able to come. Right. And that meant that Ted would have stepped up to be lead presenter because I'd never done TV. like. All this yeah, in your ear stuff. I was yes. like, what is this? I don't understand. I'm doing kind of walk arounds to suddenly fronting. Yes, that's so a big They lead. were like, Ted will take the lead and you'll still be a pundit. I was like, cool. But then Billy ended up getting COVID and Ted was in a car with him from the airport. So <gasps> they had to go into like, what's it called when you go into yeah. isolation? Yes, isolation. isolation. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so there I was like, so the in whole Austria. team had been... <laughs> And you're on your own Knocked going. out. And Seriously? I, literally. And I was like, okay. Wow. This baptism. is my moment. I was like, this is my moment. I'm either going to be really bad. Yeah. And no one will be mad I'm at me because like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Or like, I can swim through the situation and wow. then maybe they'll be like, she can have more responsibility. Yes. And so apparently How I wasn't nervous? that bad at it. How nervous were you? Weirdly, I wasn't that nervous because really? I think because I didn't understand the gravity of TV. Yes. Okay. I was just like, whatever. Like, 
and it's all this live. This person talking in my ear is really weird. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hang on, what? Don't know what's, who, like, what's going on, but the, no, so we pre-recorded the whole show except the okay. grid. So when we got onto the grid, that's when it all hit me. I was like, and, oh my God. and normally the, the girl in my ear who was counting would go 20, yeah. 10, five and all of a sudden she said all the numbers she was like 15 14 13 and i was like stop talking stop talking stop talking yeah. i can't remember what, do, what my first word is to? Well, yeah, exactly. i couldn't remember what my first word was like hello <laughs> like i know couldn't remember it it's um so the live moment on the grid scared the living daylights out of me okay but it wasn't very long and i got through it and then i was like well okay done, done. well done what, what do you think is more terrifying? Kind of that moment of live TV, someone talking on your ears, suddenly it's millions of people watching or kind of when the lights are going green. I think, What's the I think most? the lights in the car. Yeah. It's weird because I think on live TV, you can get it so wrong. Yes. It's so easily. Oh God, yeah. And everyone's watching you and everyone's ready to pick you apart. So that is kind of intimidating. Yeah. But I feel like racing is so much more serious in the sense that there's so many people working not that there isn't in tv but mm. like there's a lot of money being invested in that moment like mm. there's a lot of pressure on your shoulders to deliver so it's very different but very similar in ways mm -hmm. but i would say the the part in the car not so much on the grid but like when you're w waiting to be rolled yeah. out yeah that's the nerve that's a part. <sighs> yeah um so so after austria i suppose you were like I, if i can do that i can this this TV malarkey is going to be, I'm all over it. Which is, yeah, which is pretty much like how I felt. Yeah. And luckily, um, they were back to back weekends in Austria that year. So I did the first weekend in Austria. And then the second weekend was just like a week later. So I could get straight back onto it. Lovely. This time with an actual team around me. It wasn't yes. a one man show. What a relief. Yes. And, <laughs> and then it was really nice because I then had references, right? Like Lee would stand next to me and I'd be like, oh, that's how she does that. Or yes. Billy would do something in commentary and I'd be like, oh, that's how you do that. Absolutely. Whereas the first no. week I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing. Like, let's just do it. Yes, exactly. No, you've got to learn. And, and you had some, you know, wonderful, great, uh, very professional people to, to learn from. To learn from, absolutely. Year. So that was the first year. I mean, I, I did that for the whole season with W Series. Brilliant. While still kind of working a little bit in the office. Mm -hmm. um, and then... I was like, okay, I think ideally I'd like to do the TV stuff and not the office stuff because yeah. I wanted to use the time in between to maybe do more stuff again, like stunt driving and more mm -hmm. stuff focused on my career. So we kind of had a discussion and I was very surprised to have a call from Sky. Weirdly, I didn't ever think that they would consider me as a pundit because of the fact that I've obviously never driven an F1 car. Right. Um, but I was so delighted when they suggested it because I was like, this is kind of going to fill the void in my life of not being a driver anymore yeah. right now. Yeah. And I can still speak from a point of experience. And yeah. whether it's an F1 car or a Formula 3 car or a KTM GT4 or a Ferrari Challenge car, like whatever it is, I've driven so many different cars and racing at the end of the day is racing. Is racing. Mm. And drivers are drivers. And mm -hmm. yes, the pressure is higher. And yes, the equipment is quicker and more you know, like technologically mm. advanced, but it's mm. the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I might not be able to talk about the absolute minutia of when you do this in this car, yeah. but I can definitely speak about why a driver's chosen to do something, mm. how they might be feeling in a moment, yeah. why they've had understeer or oversteer in a moment. Yeah. So um, yeah. I was really glad that they gave me that opportunity. How brilliant. And what a fantastic year. And as I said, you know, I've watched it and you've just slotted in so beautifully with the team. And, Thank you. And, you know, brought, as I said, such a nice, a nice different angle. Um, so that's it. So presenting is because you don't have many other weekends. I mean, it's pretty no, full it's on the F1 calendar. Isn't and this it? year I still did W Series. I did eight W Series, eight F1, so 16 yeah. races. But I absolutely love it. It keeps me in the sport that I love. Mm. And like, if we're really realistic, there aren't that many women at the moment and r frankly not very many drivers mm. who have professional careers in motorsport that are like secured with a steady income yeah and so i thought you know it's a wise decision because i gotta think about my future and Absolutely. i've been fighting for this racing career for 16 years and it still was like a struggle and did i really want to continue struggling at my age yeah. I need to think about in a few years, I'm, I probably want to start a family. Like, yeah. how am I going to support that family exactly. financially? Like, 
if I'm if I'm racing, how is it possible if you you know have a kid? Mm. So it was all these things going through my mind, and I was like, you know, this is a good opportunity. It's the best of both worlds, really, Fully. because you said I watched the lovely a lovely bit of you and Pinkers going around Imola. Yeah. So you're still driving. Yes. You still get to go to all the races. You still totally fully immersed in it fully yes and really really good at it thank so you it's i appreciate it's, I, I think it's still you, learning but i have the oh best God. people around me to learn from don't so. we all i'm still i still have no idea what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> i want to talk come back to you a little bit so you've set up uh, a foundation can you tell us a little bit more about your foundation so still very much in the early phases mm -hmm. we've like actually just started running testing internal testing to make sure that the process works does the website work is the money reaching our account mm -hmm. in what currency um, so we're very much in the testing phase but what's it's, the premise of, of it so I obviously grew up in South Africa mm -hmm. and when you live there day to day you see so much poverty mm. and me and a couple of my friends have all left South Africa mm -hmm. and we live these lives that are great and in countries where the currency is a lot stronger than the South African rand mm -hmm. and so we thought you know five pounds can go a lot further than five rand yeah. and we were like okay how, how can we make sure we send money back to South Africa for small non-profit organizations yeah, that are doing brilliant. really good work on the ground yes, and indeed. initially we were working with one um, foundation that ran an, like an after-school care um, center for kids in in Soweto that had nowhere to go either their parents weren't around or their parents were working some of those kids were having their first meal of the day at the aftercare foundation so that's where like that place really touched us and we were like okay how can we help them because this is just a man and a woman, uh, like a husband and a wife. They've decided to do this off of their own, like, yeah, means. their own back, yeah. And they were also locals. They were also from Soweto. They were not like extremely wealthy people by any means. And they started this like tuk-tuk service in Soweto to give tourists a ride. And the money that they were getting out of that, some of it was going into the shelter. And Brilliant. so we were like, how can we help? Like we have got access to people with more money like we need to do something about this so that was mm. kind of where we really got inspired and now we've set up it's not just for kids so obviously kids is like a soft spot for everyone right yeah, of course. Um, so we've got a couple of like what we're calling baskets so we've got like women and gender-based violence mm -hmm. um, youth and kids um, poverty there's other there's like loads of different baskets on the website you guys can check it out yeah <laughs> um, and like some people don't know what they want to donate to. So we've got a basket that covers all and the money will get spread out every month to Lovely. all the foundations. Or you can pick if you're interested in supporting women and gender based violence. We've got yeah. a couple of charities in that basket that that money will go to. It's lovely. Um, and we hope to like onboard more charities as we go. But obviously we don't want to bite off more than we can chew. Like none of us are experiencing this. There's a lot of red tape with starting charities. Uh, we're not a charity. We're a fundraising platform, essentially. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, we kind of just don't want to forget where we came from. Yes, exactly. And make sure that we're giving back. You should speak to Gordon Murray because okay. I had a lovely chat with him and he was also the same, brought up in South Africa and, and then, you know, made this move to Europe to, yeah. to uh, then establish incredible careers. But um, he might be one that will be interesting. Okay, good to know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be calling you Gordon. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. But yeah, so we've just like decided a name. It's called Noteworthy. Noteworthy. I love that. Because all these charities are important and we don't want anyone to feel singled out. It's not about yeah. the, like the charities that are on our platform, that they're the only ones that are worthy. But um, it's a good play on words. I like it. It's Note. Good. Yes. Money. Let's get lots worthy. of notes. Yeah, exactly. Please, thank you very much. So fingers crossed the testing process goes well. Brilliant. And then we should be, I think, aiming in January to really launch. Well, good luck with it. Thank you. It's very nice to give give back. Yeah, you for know? sure, for sure. Um, but thank you so much for for chatting to me. It's just been absolutely incredible. You really are just an utter machine. Ooh. But anyway, thank you so much. Honestly, you've just thank been you. oh. incredible and so inspirational. Thank you so really, much. Really, really are. And I can't wait to watch you next year. Oh, I can't wait with either. pinkers who adore. Yes. <laughs>